It's um, 3.44 p.m. on August the 7th of 2021. And um, there was no salt. That's what I was finding out. There was no salt. Uh, when me and my husband went to the store today, you know those little canisters of salt? Where they used to be? Every single bit of it, gone. There was no iodized salt, and there wasn't any normal salt. There was a little bit of kosher salt, but that was it. And I thought, you've got to be kidding. Um, yes, that's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about, you all. There is... I want to know where the salt's at. <laughs> I really do. Um, and there was no salt. Now, you could look at that from a spiritual point of view, um, that we are the salt of the earth. You could look at that. Well, there was no salt in the store. Hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours. Uh, thank you for um, joining me in this video. Hello. Um, I just hopped on here. Spur of the moment, spontaneous. I don't even plan it out. Um, yes. Um, oh, Misha, let's uh, plan a dance day. Well, I'm not one much, I'm not really much on planning <laughs> because if I feel I have to do something, my spirit's not going to be in it because yeah, I feel like my spirit is constrained within my body. And my body won't be able to do that dancing. It won't. Hello, King of Um, Did we see Miss Applebrooks on here? Uh, no, we didn't see a Mr. Apple, Miss Applebrooks, but we got a king. Hello. Hola. Um, hello. Yes, you are the salt of the earth. Uh, yeah, Morton salt wasn't iodized in this reality. You know what I did see? One box of kosher salt that you could use for pickling. So then I thought, why are there no salt? Why isn't there salt? But look at this, what I found. Uh, Mexico, um, Celestian producers will forecast a salt shortage by 2022. Serious... Now, this is, that's really weird how you can get a salt shortage. When I've watched these documentaries of the people, they go out to the beaches or by the ocean and stuff, and they, they hammer away at these big old clumps of salt, and they carry them back on their backs. Okay, they, there's, so much, there's a lot of short, uh, salt somewhere in this world. But this is really strange, you all. Look at this. Hello. So, uh, Mexico uh, Celestian producers forecast a salt shortage by 2022. That's really, really strange, you all. It really is. Um, we, are, we're, we are having this product that was harvested uh, when people were employed. Salt mines of this port, salt producers, German, Cashew uh, Soles, and Marlin warned that this situation will not be resolved if the federal and state governments do not take action on the matter to promote a thorough cleaning of the areas where the um, Celestron salt is extracted. We have salt in wineries, but I can affirm that it will not be enough to supply our customers because this year's harvest due to the problem in the ponds. So, um, have you ever ran out of salt? One time when we lived in Hawaii, um, I ran out of salt in my house. I had one canister of salt uh, that I would just fill up my salt shaker with. And then I wanted some salt. The commissary was closed and I couldn't get no salt. I couldn't get it. And I thought, no, I'm not going to have that happen to me again. That was way back in the, um, the early, um, 2000. So yeah, if you, you, we need salt to salt our food. Okay. It makes it taste better. <laughs> it really, really does. Um, you've been stocking up on salt, uh, in the manner. Yeah, that's, that's something that, you know, you do need. Your body does need it. Uh, and they say that, you know, if you have a a high, a high blood pressure, you need to stay away from the salt and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is, have you all been ex uh, experiencing any, um, somebody got something good to say, Gaynor, did I miss that? 
uh, the Yoda. Yoda comes from Iota, the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is the root for iodine. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. It is interesting, you all. Um, this is, uh, this is strange. So have, what have you all been noticing? If you've been to the grocery store, what have you been noticing that is gone from the shelves that there's, or there's a very few of it and you don't want to take it because you want to leave it for somebody else? Because I know that they're coming. It is coming, you all. And, you know, we got this drought. This is, a. Uh, Utah, look at this. Utah has a nursing shortage. And Mizoram stores fuel shortage. There's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff going on, you all. Uh, but, yeah, that, that really got to me when I didn't see any salt whatsoever in the store that we were in today. At all. Uh, you, it, is, it is good to remove toxins and stuff. Austria salt mines areas are great tourist uh, adventures. You don't use salt except on your watermelons. Yeah. Yes, you all hit that like button. Even though we're talking about salt, but we are all the salt of the earth, so we should talk about that salt. We don't, we don't want people looking around and they don't see no salt on this earth. We don't want them to do that, you all. We can't let that happen. We cannot let the salt disappear. We can't, like it does on the store shelves. Uh, we can't. We, we just got to keep on going. Uh, keep on um, keeping our light within. You know, I want to speak about something. Uh, since I've got you on here. You know, we, we look around. We have a tendency as humans. It doesn't matter where you're at. We have a tendency to label people and look at them. And because they are not the way we are, we want to label them and we don't want to have nothing to do with them. See, uh, this, this came yesterday. There was a question. There was something comment. I thought you, I thought this was a Christian channel. You're talking new age stuff. See, that's, that's the thing right there. I did that video about we need to, we can raise the right vibration on this planet. Just because I use the word vibration, why does it mean that it's an automat, automatic trigger for some people? Do you know what? We do have a frequency within our being. Our heart vibrates on a certain frequency. And for people to go uh, look at you and label you because you use certain words that are considered new age well, boom, they don't, they don't want to have nothing to do with you. Uh, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter to me. You want to go ahead and label? So be it. Is there a lot of New Age teaching? I don't even know where the New Age came, but I guess there is. Uh, do I say things um, that are kind of New Agey? I guess maybe I do. But you know what? I don't identify with that. I identify with the love within my being. I always have and I always will. So if you've got a problem with me saying that we need to raise the vibration uh, with this love within our being, our raise the vibration, that's, that's too bad. That's too bad. It's the truth. It is the truth. And you have, you have the frequency that's in music. You have the frequency that's in beautiful colors. Okay, and it helps raise the vibration spiritually. It's time that we get out of this tunnel vision that we've got. You know, we don't need to divide any further than we're already being divided. You know, we've got, we've got a common bond within us, and I think that's what we need to focus on. We need to quit splitting hairs because that's exactly what it is. We're splitting hairs with one another because... Let's say one person doesn't like this type of food and then another person doesn't like this type of food. Well, one person wears their hair this way. One person doesn't wear their hair this way. One person dresses this way. One person doesn't dress that way. One person goes to this type of church. The other person goes to this type of church. One person reads from that type of Bible. Well, I don't read from that type of Bible. That's whatever. See, this is it's all of these regulations these chains that we're putting on people, we're, put, we're limiting them, we're, we're, we're distancing them because we have been taught, it has been literally ingrained within our beings as we grow up, certain 
things that we are supposed to accept and certain things that we are supposed to reject. Okay, this is all our upbringing, you all. We have had things like this hammered and tied our being. Let me, I will tell you about me. If you didn't know that, I grew up in church since a little bitty child. We went to this little bitty church in our town, and uh, it's fine. Uh, and then as I got older, we went to another church. It was like a uh, full gospel apostolic, okay, and that's fine. But as I went to that church, uh, as I grew up, I was taught, this is what I was taught. And may God forgive me for passing judgment on somebody, but I did. I was taught, it, you, when you sit in certain churches, and I don't got nothing against the churches, I don't got nothing against the preachers, but I got a, I got a thing against labeling and judging because you know what I did? I was taught that if you wore pants, that was a sin. And um, someone actually got in a great big argument. Okay, they did. They get in arguments over, you cut your hair, that's not of God. You wear pants, that's not of God because your wearing clothes pertaineth to a man. Now, I might be stepping on some people's toes. This is how I was brought up. Okay, of course, I wore pants. I didn't want to wear dresses all the time. I didn't. Uh, I wanted to wear what was comfortable for me. Okay, and I never looked down on anybody if they decided to wear dresses. If they wanted to have their hair long, that's fine. I'm, I always, right inside of here, that is the most important thing to me right here. It doesn't matter how you look on the outside. I'm just telling you right now, uh, I don't look at the outside appearance. I look at what's going to come out of your mouth. That's what I look at because that's what's inside your heart. So I went to the church, and that's what I was brought up with. And I, I didn't agree with it, but still, it got embedded within me. And then I went to this church in Nevada, and it was a Baptist church, and the preacher's wife, she wore pants. And I thought, oh, my gosh, how can you wear pants? Don't you know that you will go to hell for wearing pants? Because why did I say that? It was spoken to me. It was embedded into my mind in the church that I sat in. And then, you know, her tears got in her eyes, swelled up in her eyes, and she explained to me, God does not look at the outward person. It says, I don't judge no man except my Father in heaven. He judges the heart. And she said a whole lot more things. But it was in that very moment in time that I realized that I sat and I passed judgment based on what I was taught, what I had drilled into my head. You know, that was a very good friend. We had a very wonderful friendship. And, you know, I, I, knew, I, I unlearned things that were embedded in my mind. I thought, you got, you've got to be kidding. I can't believe that I did that. But still... This, these are the things that, that I'm talking about. And then, you know, let me, let me talk. Let me tell you this. Okay, you all, this is, I'm going somewhere with this. It's about the labeling. It's about the constant dividing of people uh, who are supposed to have the love of God within them. It's about the constant dividing of people. Okay, I love people. Love is first and foremost. Okay, it is. Um so when, when my husband retired from the military, we wanted to find a church for our children. We went to one church. We went there. They got on this, they got on the Bible, the NIV Bible. They said it was straight from the pits of hell. And the preacher, he knew that we were reading from the NIV Bible because it was very explanatory. It breaks it down even more. Okay. And I got my husband one when he was remote for a whole year in South Korea on remote. And you know that that Bible that he read, it made a difference in his life. It made a difference in his life and I'm I'm very thankful for that. But we got out and I got my kids a Bible. And it, you know, if you don't want to read the Bible, if you don't like that Bible, that's fine. And if you're from a different type of religion, that's fine too. That's it's all fine with me. I'm not judging you. Okay? I'm not judging you. But I'm telling you what happens when you are taught and have things embedded within your mind, okay, it's deeply embedded from a man's point of view. And it's not God's point of view, man's point of view. So we go to this one church, and my children were, went to Sunday school, and um, they were reading from their Bible, and the Sunday school teacher noticed they were reading from a Bible that was not the authorized King James Bible. And after they got out of Sunday school, we were sitting in the service, 
And the preacher knew it. They, he told the preacher, and the preacher decided he wanted to do a sermon on the NIV. And as he stood on the pulpit, he looked straight at us, and he said, I hope the tips of your fingertips burn as you flip through the pages of your NIV. And when I heard that, I thought, oh my gosh. And then he and then he proceeded to say, I hope you take that Bible and you just throw it out there in the parking lot. Because that's where it deserves. Just throw it away. But I hope the tips of your fingers burn as you flip through the pages. I quit going there. We quit going there, you all. And you know, that hurt me. That hurt me that they weren't looking at the inside of me or the inside of my children, or the inside of my husband, they were only looking at what we had in our hand. They were only looking at what they were, had embedded inside of them their whole entire life, and this was the doctrine that they stood upon. It was not a doctrine of love. It wasn't, because love does not do that to people. It doesn't do that to people. It's like me saying, okay, you read your child this storybook, a Bible storybook, well, I'm sorry, you can't because it's not the version that we find acceptable. Now, this may bother some people, but I'm telling you what it made me feel like, okay? that I'm telling you what it made me feel like and made my children feel like and my husband, okay? When you do things like that, let me tell you what you do. You literally push people so far away that they, if they and they, they say this, if that's how religion is, if that's how God is, I don't want nothing to do with God. See what you do? You do the very thing that you're not supposed to do. You lay a stumbling block right in front of somebody who is looking for acceptance. You put a big stumbling block in front of them and you send a message loud and clear. You're not accepted in this church. That's what you do. You send the message loud and clear to people who are looking for hope. You don't give them no hope. Instead, you give them condemnation. Now, what kind of God is that? That's what they think that would set and condemn me. I guess I have to wear dresses or I'm not going to be acceptable. I've done that too. I would not go into a church because I knew what they thought about women wearing pants. So... My, they made me feel guilty on the inside. I felt I had to wear a dress every time I stepped into the church because that's the guilt. They lay a guilt trip on you, you all. Not all churches are like that. There are plenty of churches that don't condemn you for what you wear, but if you stay in there long enough, you're going to find out there's some, they're going to let it slip out that they don't think you ought to be doing that. I don't know why I'm saying this. This is this is for someone, you all, because I literally, I stay as far away from religion as I possibly can, um, okay? I do. I'm a spiritual being. I have a very, I have a background of going up in church and stuff and reading the Bible. I do, but you know what? When I moved out of the home at age 21, I got married, and I started traveling all along, all around the world in the military with my husband, I got to see what other people from different faiths, different uh, backgrounds were like, different cultures. I got to see how the real world was. And you know what? I'm so happy that I did. I'm so happy that my children did because you know what? It helped get that stuff out of me. I don't, I don't want to sit around and I don't want to pass judgment. I don't want to look down on you. I don't. I don't want to tell you how to live your life according to my interpretation. I don't want to do that. That's not my place. Okay? And I'm I'm not going to let somebody tell me either. I'm not. I'm telling you how I feel. Uh, there's not very many people who's going to get on here and tell you how they feel like that. But I'm telling you how I feel and what I think about it. I think it's wrong. When, especially in the day and age that we're living in, you go to church, you don't want to hear a sermon on condemnation. You want to hear a sermon on love. You want to hear them speak about the love that is inside of here and the love you can receive from above. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear about love. So um, this this message is for somebody on here, maybe a whole lot more. Don't, don't do that to people. 
And you may wonder why don't people want to hear what I've got to say. Well, let me let me tell you this. When you get on here and saying Jesus is the only way, repent right now, and you lay down this and you're shoving this into people's faith, face. One comment will suffice. One comment will suffice. You, that's not how you bring people to God. That's not how you bring people to Jesus. Because if you're going to come at me and I never heard of Jesus before or I never heard of God before and you're going to come at me like that and you're not going to care about who I am on the inside, you're just going to preach this straight to me, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to go, okay, whoa, I don't want nothing to do with that. It's your approach. It's the way you approach people. That's what it is, okay? You cannot reach people when you're like that, you cannot, you cannot shove religion down somebody's throat. And that's what a lot of people do. They shove religion down people's throat. Um, I'm not one to do that. And you're not going to hear me do that. And you know, a lot of times I see on here, you never mention the name of Jesus. Why don't you mention the name of Jesus? I thought you were a Christian. What does your family think about you? All this kind of stuff. All this kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, you're not looking at me. You're not looking at me. You're not looking at what's inside my heart. No. You're looking at, you're looking for something that you want to see in me because you think that needs to be in me and you're not seeing it, so then you come at me. That That's what I'm talking about, you all. I promise you, I don't like to talk about this. How many times have you heard me talk about this? It might have been one other time, maybe, maybe one other time. We've got to stop this division that's taking place, okay? You ever hear the thing? He who is not against us is with us. You know, if you've got a common goal that you're working toward, you think you'd want to band together and work, put your differences aside and work toward that common goal, okay? It is possible. It's very possible as long as you get your ego out of here out of the way get the ego out of the way you all your ego is your stumbling block and your ego will blind you it will blind you you will not be able to see anything else except that which you want to see that's what i'm talking about you all that's what i'm talking about um so yeah and guess what you say you don't you don't mention jesus well i i believe in jesus He's living inside of here. I believe in God. He's living inside of here. It's love. It's love in its fullest. It's love in its greatest. Love is the source of God. It's the source of all things. It's the, it's the, it's the source of the creator within us. Okay, it's, it's everything. Love is everything. Without it, you're nothing. It's like the Apostle Paul. If I don't have love, I'm a sounding, a resounding gong. Okay? You can, you can give to the poor. You can, get, you can do all these things. But if you got love, if that love is not in there, you're doing it all in vain. And let, while I'm at it, you, it says like this. You will know them by their fruits. Okay? You will know them by their fruits. And out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay? You don't want to have a forked tongue. Okay? You don't. You don't want to have a forked tongue. With one breath, you're... You're praising everybody, and then with the next breath, you're condemning everybody. You, you don't want to be like, you don't want to be a whitewashed tomb. You don't want to be like the scribes and the Pharisees who have their great big flowing robes, and they do these great big long prayers hoping somebody's going to sit there and pay attention to them. You don't want to be like that, okay? Can you just be you? Can you let God work on the inside of you? Can you let love Create that miracle on the inside of you. Can you let that love do that? Because, because love will literally transform you from the inside out. Okay? It's that simple. It boils down to love. Okay? It, it makes no... It doesn't make sense to set and keep splitting hairs. It doesn't. That's how we got in this mess to begin with, you all. The continual splitting, the continual pointing of fingers, that's how we got in this mess to begin with. Okay? They used religion, man-made religion, to divide us, okay? 
I'm not anti-religious. I'm not. But that's what they did. You look at all, look out there. All these different types of religions from all around the world. All around the world. They all speak of one creator. Okay. Yet they have different regulations within them. They speak of love too. They all speak of love. I think. Unless I'm mistaken. They all speak of love. So what is... Something happened along the way. We've got to push those, push those things aside, you all. We got to push it aside. We got to look at each other through eyes of love. Tune out all that other stuff. Saying, "Well, well, I can't." They, 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 they wearing clothes that look like a man, and they cutting their hairs, and they're eating types of food that they shouldn't be eating. Put it, push it all aside. Push it all aside, and look through these eyes of love right here. Look through the eyes of love. And then the way will be made known. It will be made known. Okay? You've got to unlearn everything that we're taught. Just like in school. We weren't taught the truth. We weren't taught the truth, you all. There's a lot of truth that has been hidden. A lot of truth that has been hidden. I know this is not popular with some people. I'm probably going to lose followers, too. I don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. Our time here is short. My time here is short too, okay? We ain't got time to split hairs. This is further dividing you all. So please, you know, I'm not, I'm not a channel where I'm having, I'm, I'm doing sermons every day. This is not how I started off. That was not, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing, okay? I have a different mission in life. I have a different calling in life than you. If you want to hear me uh, do that, if you want to hear somebody do that, you might want to go to channels who that is their sole thing. The so thing, but you know what? I like to cover all different types of subjects. I do, um, and that's okay. That's okay. It's okay for me to be different. It's okay for me to have a different calling on my life. It's okay. It's okay for you to have a different calling. But do we need to just point it out because we're not the same? I'm urging you, please. We're living in very very hard times it's going to get harder it's going to get more extreme we've got to put our differences aside we've got to do that you all we've got to band together that's what we've got to do and i want to say during this journey i want to say i am so very i'm very very thankful that i've been put on this journey because i've learned so much i've read so many comments from all different perceptions of life. I've read it all. Uh, did some of them, did I like? No, I didn't like them. But you know what? I read them anyway. I, I took them in. Some of them I let go. Some of them they sunk deep. Some of them pierced me. But you know what? If it wasn't for that, I would not have grown into the person that I am today. Okay? It's made me stronger. It's made me feel more emboldened within my spirit. You all, we're here to learn and we're here to grow so that we can gain the strength that we need to face each tomorrow that comes our way, okay? That's what we're here for. We learn to accept those things that aren't really that hard to accept, but yet we've had it in, embedded within us that, no, you can't. You can't, okay? I love, 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 love people, okay? I can't help that. It's at the core of my being. I love people. And it hurts me when I see other people pointing the finger at others and trying to tell them how to be, how to live their life and all of that. It's like you're saying you're not good enough. Why aren't you not good enough? Why aren't you not good enough? Is it because some people or somebody else's perception of you is telling you that? Tune it out. That's what I've learned to do. You've got to tune it out. You are good enough. I'm telling you, you are good enough. If you're watching this video, you are good enough. Tune out what everyone else says about you. You are perfect. You are perfectly made. You are divinely made on the inside of here. It doesn't matter what nobody else says. It doesn't matter at all. Don't let somebody put those thoughts in your mind and speak to you like that, you all. You're perfect. Okay, you're perfect just the way you are. And if you need to make change, let that change come from within you 
on its own, okay? Don't, don't let somebody else change you into somebody that you're not, somebody that you don't want to be. So I want to thank you all for listening. I think I've done said enough. My words are ending. And I had no intention of do, saying everything that came out of my mouth. I don't even know what all I said. I'll have to come back. And I will listen to it later this evening. But thank you all so much for tuning in. We've got to quit splitting hairs. We've got to quit nagging, biting, and gnawing at each other. Because you know what scripture says if you want to read the Bible. If you keep on gnawing, biting and gnawing, gnawing at each other, watch out because you'll be destroyed by each other. And that's the truth. You will destroy each other the, as long as you continue to bite and gnaw and pick and fault find. You're going to end up destroying your relationships. You're going to destroy each other. So I'm going to end this video uh, with this. Uh, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. A sincere, heartfelt Hello from my heart to yours. Love you.